If you're new to concealed carry, you're going to have to have something to carry your concealed weapon in, and that would be a holster. Today we're going to go over four distinct types of holsters and how they operate. Come right up. Hey everybody and welcome to the 9mm Tuesday edition of Get on Target with Link. Today we are talking about holsters. We're going to go over four distinct types of holsters. Each one of them has its own advantages and disadvantages in different situations, different types of clothing, etc. This is just a general overview of categories of holsters. Each one of these holsters will have an in-depth review of at a later video, but today it's just an overview of what's available for concealed carry. Just a quick mention, if you are enjoying the content on this channel, like it, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Not only holsters, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. I've got a whole ton of videos that are in the works, but it's going to take some time to get them all produced and out there to you. But come on aboard, join the journey. I'm on it. You can be on it. I'd like to have you with me. I'd like to see what's going on in your gun life as I tell you what's going on with mine. So, with no further ado, we're going to get right into holsters. So, let's introduce our friends here in front of us. These are four distinct types of holsters, each one with their own job to do. Probably the most common that people are most familiar with is the outside the waistband uh, carry. It's, these are variations on the, the Old West holster that you would have seen um, in any Old West movie, but they are highly modernized and updated. This is a Kydex holster. This is a type of plastic that is specifically molded for a specific weapon. This one was made for my Taurus G2C, and we'll see how that operates and, uh, and is specifically customized to that weapon in just a few minutes. Frequently, it's used as a non-concealed option, but it can be a concealed option as well, depending on the clothing. So that's the first one. Number two is this inside the waistband holster. This one also has, um, uh, both of these hang off of your belt. These two first two are both belt dependent um, in different ways. But on this one, this actually gets tucked down inside your pants, whereas the other one is going to be outside of your pants. So this is an IWB or inside the waistband holster and this one is an OWB an outside the waistband holster. Two main categories of concealed weapon carrying. Now pocket pistols are very popular. We've done the uh, reviews of the Smith & Wesson bodyguard. Um, this is a pocket holster you're actually going to put the weapon into your pocket. Um, this can be useful um, if you have uh, the right kind of pants. You're going to need the right kind of pants for this to actually conceal. In tight skinny jeans, this is going to be pretty obvious. Um, so you have to have, uh, in each of the cases here, you're going to have to have the right clothing matched to the right holster. So that's part of why people wind up having a drawer full of different holsters for different applications. Now this one here is actually quite sticky. This surface is very sticky. That's part of how they work. The weapon will go in here and then into your pocket and this little lip here will catch on your pants and the sticky nature of the holster itself will keep the holster in your pocket as you withdraw the weapon from your pocket. So you don't want to be pulling this out of your pocket and your weapon is, has this stuck on it as you withdraw. So these are specifically designed to stick in your pocket when you remove the weapon. 
That's what this is. It's a pocket holster. Used the way it's designed, which is for in-pocket use, this does not require a belt. These two do. The next one here also does not require a belt. The reason it doesn't is essentially it is a belt. This is called a belly band holster and you see it's going to unfold quite a bit. Inside is neoprene which goes against your body and this will wrap around and form a, a belt of its own that goes around you. You can cinch this quite tight against your body and then you'll have a place to secure your weapon here. Now these are not made specifically for one type of weapon as, and as you'll see in a minute uh, a lot of different weapons will fit in this and this has a lot of different applications. This is a very versatile, versatile type of holster. Um, not everybody's cup of tea. Some people don't like them at all, but they're very versatile. You can do a lot of different things with these and I'll show you how that works in just a minute. So now let's look at how each one of these would actually go on to the body. Now I will warn you when putting this on, I'm going to have to be dropping my trousers, but I am wearing some jogging shorts underneath them. So it w this is not going to be X-rated. You can keep the kids in the room if they're watching. But that's, I'm going to do that one last. But let's start first with the two that are going to require my belt. And we'll start with the traditional outside the waistband holster. Now, as I mentioned, this is made specifically for my Taurus G2C, and you'll see why in just a minute. But when using a, a, any holster that is going to be integrally connected to your belt, it's important that the belt be fairly substantial. This is a good, thick, thick leather belt, and it's, a, it's appropriate for our use. Now, this one's going to go outside the waistband. So we're going to see it, and I'm putting this, this paddle, which is contoured, okay, to fit my body. And these are actually very, very comfortable to wear. But I'm putting that paddle inside, and as I put it in there, the tabs of the belt that, that cling to the belt are actually poking through the fabric now of my of my pants and hooking onto that belt. This is really really secure. This is really on there tight and it's very comfortable. That contouring I barely can feel the thing on me at all. Now this is where you'll see why this was designed. By the way all weapons are always safe this is no exception so we're taking the weapon and we're gonna put it in the holster and I want you to listen to this sound did you hear that click it's not coming out of there it won't come out of there there's a little finger press right here that requires me to depress it before it will come back out of the holster. So you'll hear that click. And that is a boom. That click is a signature sound of a Kydex holster that's molded specifically to a weapon. Um, very secure way to carry it. Not a very concealed option, clearly. Now it is possible to wear these concealed. I'm going to demonstrate that now. If we take the my shirt out and put that over it, you can see that there's a lot of printing going on. Now part of that is the position that I have it in. I have it on the side. It's clearly there. It's not subtle. This is not a concealed option per se. In appendix, it's a little better, but it's still it's still there. Uh, this, is not a particular, this is not particularly a concealed option. 
it's a holster. It's an outside the waistband holster and that's its intended use. So that is the Kydex holster. Still, one of the most popular forms of holster. There's a, there's a great confidence uh, of carrying it that way, but it's not concealed and I, am a, I have a strong preference for concealed carry. We'll talk about that on another video one day, but for now, we'll leave it alone. Okay, I'm tucked back in now, and we're going to go on to our second type of holster. This is an inside the waistband holster. So the way these work, these have a clip, as you can see, and that clip is going to go over my pants. And in the, most times, for most inside the waistband holsters, that clip is going to go over your belt and you're going to have a little, uh, you're going to be, it's going to have a visible clip on your belt. And that's really all you're going to see. Um, but in this case, this one goes onto your pants and then the belt loops into it right there. But right now, that is held tight to my body, very flush to my body. Now, of course, you can see it now, but when I do a, once again untuck, this is also a, a trimmer weapon, so it's easier to conceal than the G2C was. But now, because it's so well placed against my body, it's very subtle. This is very subtle and not easily recognized uh, as being there. But it's very accessible should I need it. Excellent holster. Now, this was specifically made for the Glock 42, but because they're not too, too dissimilar in size, my Smith & Wesson bodyguard, even with the recent upgrades you may have seen me make to it, will also fit in this holster. So it's not, uh, it's not universal by any means, but these two are, and again, you can see, quite, quite subtle. Um, this is a great, great carry option. Very secure and very discreet. Okay, we're all tucked up and put back together. So the next holster that we're going to take a look at, the next category, is the pocket holster. And again, this is as simple as it gets. These are, this holster was $8. They're incredibly inexpensive, incredibly simple. You can pay up to $20, $25 for them. So far, my $8 version is working just dandy for me. I'm pretty pleased with this. Again, we'll have individual uh, reviews on each of these holsters later on. These come in different sizes, but they're more generic. So this is, whereas this one was specifically made for the Glock 42, this is made for small pocket pistols. I bought it specifically for my bodyguard. And as you can see, when I put it in, the trigger guard is covered. I cannot reach the trigger. There's no way for me to accidentally reach that trigger. That is an important factor on every single holster that you're going to look at. This is an important part of the puzzle of holsters. They have to cover your trigger. But now that it is, this couldn't be simpler. All I'm doing is taking the weapon, putting it in my pocket, and there you go. Now, you're going to see something there. It's not completely going to disappear, but because of the design of the holster, it's not going to be apparent that it's a weapon. It could be a cell phone. It could be a notebook. It's impossible to tell what that is specifically in my pocket. And that's the point. That's what conceals it. Pockets are used to carry things. It's not unusual to see something in a pocket. No particular um, attention will be paid to that. 
Now, in a situation that seems tense or potentially dangerous, it's also not that strange to see somebody with their hands in their pockets. It's another common use of a pocket. And so it's easy to also prepare in a tense situation without drawing attention to yourself. All you do is then remove the weapon and there you are. And the holster remains in the pocket. If it's, ma if it's made appropriately, it's going to stay in your pocket. It's not going to come out. Um, it's actually, it's very easy to remove. And I have not had this thing come out of my pocket yet. And it's fairly easy to reholster and put it away. So, again, it has its own specific purpose. It's, um, uh, maybe you've got tight clothing. Maybe you have to wear something that's, that's buttoned up and tightened up. Uh, and it's not appropriate up here or it would be terribly apparent. Now, a pocket carry might be a more appropriate choice. But out it comes. The holster stays in the pocket and it's ready. So that's how a pocket holster works. Now these also, as I mentioned, they can double as a inside the waistband holster. And they actually work pretty well that way. Um, if they, in this case though, it does require a belt because the belt is going to give it the tension against the sticky part of the holster to retain it as you remove the weapon. So that is another version of a, of a holster that's going to require some belt assistance. The outside the waistband holster will, that's absolutely critical. The inside the waistband holster, the belt's going to keep it in place when you are drawing the weapon. In this case, it's going to put tension on the sticky part to keep it in place so that you can, so the holster stays behind when you draw. Now, this, these actually can be more concealed. Once again, we're untucking. Once we do that, it's pretty much gone. It's just not there. And because this shirt is so long, when it's in your pocket, it pretty much disappears as well because the now the pocket isn't really on display either and it just disappears. Now we're going to get to the belly band holster and this thing is going to be uh, a completely different category. The fact is you can wear this in the nude and it will hold your weapon on you. If you jog, if you bicycle, uh, anything active. These are a very popular choice for all of those types of um, scenarios where you still want to have a weapon with you. Um, and many people will wear them as their holster of choice. They're comfortable. Um, they can get a little warm if you're in a really hot climate. And we, we are here at uh, the summertime in Virginia is pretty oppressive. So uh, maybe not the best everyday all around carry. But these are incredibly versatile. And this is where my jogging shorts come in. This has Velcro, as you can hear. And you're going to tighten it up around your belly. You can make it quite, quite tight, which is probably a very good idea. Now, what you'll see, this particular one has places for magazines, an additional magazine, uh, or two, okay? But over here, all it is is a elastic envelope that's open at the bottom to handle different types of guns. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. I'm just going to tuck my shirt in behind it for the time being. Okay, so my smallest weapon, the bodyguard. In it goes, take the strap, lock it down, gone, gone. Really effective. Number two, Glock 42, just a tad bigger. 
once more into the envelope, covers up the trigger, take that strap, lock it down, Glock 42, gone, disappears. The Glock 42, although it's categorized as a subcompact, it's a more substantial weapon. This is, this is a 12 round magazine compared to two six round magazine choices that we've just looked at. But same holster and here she goes. Once again, the trigger is covered, snap goes down, retains the weapon in place, and this is pretty, pretty subtle as well. What you can see is we can wear it anywhere we choose to. If you want to wear it cross draw, there it is. If you want to wear it to the back, there it is. Some people will wear it high. Um, almost as a shoulder holster with it tucked into the in underneath the arm that's going to depend on a certain type of clothing always always it's the, these are all different options that are going to vary depending on what you wear and how you wear it but there there's a there's a solution for every possible carry problem these are four of them and they're very popular and they're very versatile and very useful. Okay, so those are four different types of holsters. Any of them will uh, suffice as a first holster, but they're for very different purposes. If you're trying to conceal, the outside the waistband is probably your least best option. Uh, for, for concealed carry, any of the other three, you just have to start considering what you wear on a regular basis and how your clothing is going to help or hinder the concealment of the weapon, that's going to lead you to the best choice of a holster, or at least it's going to help. So that was the 9mm Tuesday edition of Get on Target with Link. Hope it was helpful. Um, you know we want you on board, so like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. Just a tremendous amount of stuff coming down the pipe, so keep keep looking for it because it's gonna it's coming it's coming I'm, I'm a busy little beaver one arm paper hanger here so hope you stay tuned and keep watching get on target with link and until we meet the next time see ya